Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very unusual discovery made by an amateur astronomer from Japan, something that no other astronomer was able to do until now. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So, as I was looking through these space news and reading about them, I discovered something a little bit unusual. And it actually relates to a video game that I was waiting for. There's a video game that just came out, Cold Death Stranding. A game by Hideo Kojima, who is actually really really famous amongst video game developers. And although this particular video has nothing to do with that video game, it's the name Kojima that kind of caught my eye, because in one of the news coming out of Japan, and specifically Japanese uh, space sciences, I noticed that someone actually added a planet known as Kojima 1. And more specifically, Kojima 1LB. And that really caught my attention, because for a second there I actually thought it was named after Hideo Kojima. I was obviously wrong, because Kojima is a pretty popular name in Japan and there are quite a lot of Kojimas out there. As a matter of fact, in astronomy and astrophysics alone there are at least three really famous Kojimas already. But anyway, so what exactly did this person by the name of Kojima found? Well, essentially, he discovered a really interesting exoplanet. And in this particular discovery, many things were first ever. First of all, of course, he's an amateur astronomer, so there's that. He was using his own toolkit, something that he made himself. And at the same time, it was also the first Neptune-like planet discovered at a distance of 500 or so parsec, which is equivalent to about 1650 light years. So this is really far away. Which means that the planet is really difficult to see. So how exactly did he do it and why wasn't this discovered earlier by other astronomers? Well, he actually discovered or made the original discovery back in 2017, but he wasn't really sure what he was looking for. Because this is not what he was looking for. He wasn't really looking for planets. He was actually looking for Nova. Nova are the really large explosions um, very close to stars, normally formed when a smaller or a more compact star accumulates a lot of matter around itself and eventually this matter reaches what would be equivalent to a nuclear reaction. Basically it reaches the critical mass and explodes. And this explosion becomes a nuclear explosion that's visible from really far away. This is something we usually expect from much smaller stars, like for example this White Dwarf Series B right here, the so-called compact stars. They're usually really good at essentially stealing matter from their partners and um, then they accumulate this matter, creating the um, equivalent of an accretion disk, and inside of this accretion disk, some of the matter will eventually reach the critical limit and then explode. So seeing Nova is normally not very difficult, because essentially the star becomes really really bright really quickly, and it can be easily detected using amateur equipment. So this is what the Japanese astronomer was looking for, and this is essentially what he was trying to find. Um, back then, in 2017, he's already discovered four such events, and he was just looking for more. But then he saw something a little bit more unusual. A brightening event, but it wasn't something that he was used to. And so he basically published his data and was essentially asking for help trying to identify what he just witnessed. Now, as you can probably tell from the title, what he witnessed was a planet. But how exactly did he see it, and what exactly does it have to do with NOAA? Well, when it comes to detecting exoplanets, there's one method that is essentially brilliant, difficult, and exceptionally interesting. It's the gravitational lensing method. You can kind of see uh, the simulation that NASA created that sort of explains to you how it works and what happens. In a nutshell, if we have a star at a distance that emits a lot of light and we can easily see it from Earth, and then there's another star with a planet massive enough to actually bend this light and passes in front of this starlight, we'll actually see the emissions of the star and the little emissions from the planet that essentially bend the light. So in other words, these gravitational lensing effects are quite visible. They do appear as a kind of a flash. And this flash is very unique and very easy to identify because it creates a somewhat familiar pattern. So far we've discovered just under 100 exoplanets using this method, but this Kojima 1LB uh, discovery is in a sense special because it was made by an amateur astronomer and it took approximately two years to confirm it. 
Now, one of the reasons it took so long is because it was really far away. This is 1600 light years away from us. And also because it required a lot of follow-up observations. And every follow-up observation ended up confirming the detection. This essentially means that we've detected a planet that's about 20 masses of Earth. And it's a planet around a star that's roughly around 58 to 59 percent the mass of our own sun. So in other words, it's what's known as a K-type star, uh, very similar in a sense to um, our own sun, although less massive, and at a distance of just uh, around the same distance as planet Earth, which is about one astronomical unit or um, around 150 million kilometers, we've discovered this Neptune-like planet. And the only thing we know so far is its mass. We don't really know its size because uh, gravitational lensing does not allow us to actually see the size of the planet, but we can assume that it's probably very similar to our own Neptune and Uranus, and it's probably some sort of a gas giant. And based on the distance and the type of star, the temperatures here are probably really cold. Um, the actual temperatures around this planet are very likely similar to the temperatures of the asteroid belt in the solar system, so in other words, it's probably somewhere around minus 150 degrees Celsius. In other words, we don't really think that this is going to be a world with a lot of warm and a lot of hospitable environments, but nevertheless, it's a pretty interesting planet. And to me personally, this is actually a great discovery, simply because, well, honestly, astronomy and astrophysics have always been at the forefront of various discoveries and innovation. And specifically here, we're talking about the ability of amateur scientists to actually join the um, scientific community and to start discovering things that would not be possible otherwise. And this is mostly because of the advances in uh, various types of cameras and various types of telescopes that are possible uh, to either buy or to even create yourself. You've probably already heard about the discovery of the second ever interstellar comet here in the, in the solar system, which was of course made by another amateur astronomer, this guy right here, this is Gennady Borisov. And he's already also discovered other things, other comets and asteroids, so uh, both Kojima and Borisov are really productive amateurs. As a matter of fact, they're more productive than some of the professional astronomers, which is actually not an insult to astronomers, but more of a compliment to how far amateur astronomy has gotten. And I personally mentioned in previous videos that I really wanted to try doing radio astronomy myself. As a matter of fact, this is a typical um, radio astronomy antenna that you can build yourself and you can actually listen to various pulsars with this. But unfortunately, due to the location where I am, I am not allowed to do radio astronomy unless I am a professional, which is sort of disappointing, but not all countries unfortunately have the same freedoms as, I guess in this sense, Japan, that allow you to use these amateur tools to discover various beautiful objects out there. Well, anyway, the reason I wanted to make this video it was really more of an inspiration for you to try and maybe discover something as well. Or at least try your hand at the amateur astronomy because it's gotten really easy to do, it's not even that expensive anymore, and most importantly, uh, pretty much most of the major cities around the world have really large communities of amateur astronomers getting together and looking at the night skies and trying to discover something else unusual, cool, or something that no one else has seen. As a matter of fact, amateur astronomy is at the forefront of major discoveries today and quite a lot of things out there are done either with actual observations or analysis. Like for example, the citizen science projects like Galaxy Zoo essentially started all of this. These were some of the first projects that essentially asked for help from regular people and found a way to combine an interactive activity with actual research. So in that sense, there's a lot of really cool things going on and you don't even have to buy anything to join amateur astronomy community. So if you'd like to try your hand at Galaxy Zoo, the link for this is in the description below. Well, anyway, so that's all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely a really cool discovery. And even though it took approximately two years to finally um, investigate this in detail and discover what exactly the Japanese astronomers saw, it's still really awesome that he was able to see something that not only do most professional astronomers don't really get to see, but he was able to do so using his own tools, something he created himself. And it's very likely that we'll probably never see the planet Kojima 1LB ever again because it's really far away and because it needs to align um, with the typical star in a very, very specific way. But nevertheless, we might actually get to see other planets using similar techniques. 
Anyway, on that note, thank you for watching. Check out the paper if you like reading. It's in the description below. And subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. And come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it actually helps me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.